Hey guys, welcome back to Z Code System here on YouTube. Drew speaking to you, and it's good to be back to talk about the Premier League. And we're going to look at some games coming up on February the 28th. That's Sunday, the last day of February, and a great day to cap off the month in the Premier League with some games. Now, as you can see there, I've got the Z Code System dot com backslash blog open where you can get all you need to know about some upcoming NBA games there on February the 20th as well. So a possible NBA finals preview between the Clippers and the, uh, the Bucks there. And uh, you can get a pick for that game as well as some other great information that we post there. Uh, I recently posted about the upcoming Major League Baseball season, which the uh, Major League Baseball spring training games uh, start up this weekend. So if you need to know some more information about Major League Baseball, some of the rule changes, as well as the favorites to win the World Series at the moment, then obviously go over to Z Code System and check out all of the information we've posted there, as well as everything else that we put up, because you will get a lot more knowledge uh, for your sports betting going forward. And of course, go over to this VIP sign up and you can get all of the tools at your fingertips to use on sports betting. Now, we're talking specifically about the Premier League today, and we're going to look at a tool from Z Code System, the Soccer Buddy tool, which I use regularly here in my videos and in my betting. And I'm going to show that to you today uh, and the games as we get some picks, and I give you some information about the games going forward. So before we do that, though, let's take a look at the current table, the standings in the Premier League going into match day 26. Okay, here we have a... The, the, Okay, here we have the table for the current Premier League season, and this is just the website understat.com, which I often use, uh, because it gives you a lot of great uh, information there besides your usual goals, goals against, and points. You've got your expected goals, your expected goals against, and your expected points uh, for the season, so that gives you a lot of great information and help when you are making your sports bets and picks. So this is the current table right now. Manchester City on top of the Premier League by 10 points over Manchester United. And we've seen Manchester United slipping up over the last few weeks. They have only won two of their last six games in the league and have fallen off the pace. Uh, to me, I've said this before in videos on my own YouTube channel, which you can check out at Drew Farmer. Uh, but uh, I've, I've mentioned how Manchester United are a very inconsistent team and not good enough to win the Premier League. Yes, they've only lost four games this season. But this is a team that I, I don't think is the quality in the team is good enough. I don't think the manager is good enough. And uh, Manchester City have really pulled away in the last uh, few games. And we're going to look at that Manchester United game coming up this weekend. They're going to go to Chelsea and play in a huge game on Sunday. We're going to look at that game. And it is a game, in my opinion, that Manchester United will most likely drop points and uh, fall further away from Manchester United. And we're probably going to see, in my opinion, Manchester United trying to just simply hang on to a top four place. It's very competitive there at the top of the top of the league. Uh, Liverpool, we've seen dropping like a stone lately, four straight losses. Chelsea have improved since the hiring of Thomas Tuchel back in January. Uh, West Ham, surprise team right there under David Moyes. And Leicester City are staying as consistent as possible to stay in that top four after slipping out last year and missing out on a Champions League qualification place. Uh, of course, you can't forget about Everton and Aston Villa and Tottenham in there. Um, going all the way down to ninth, you know, they're just, uh, what is that, nine points away from the top four. So one of those teams could catch fire in the next 10 to 13 games and uh, get back in this, uh, get back in this title fight or, or not title fight, but uh, Champions League qualification place fight. Um, if we scroll down just a little bit further here, we look at uh, the bottom of the table, which is very competitive. We've got our points right here, uh, our points category right here. Uh, we see Sheffield United last this season or last at the moment. And by all looks of it, going down to the championship, going to be relegated. This is a very poor team. Liverpool play them this weekend at Bramall Lane. So that will be an exciting game. Uh, West Brom uh, have picked things up a little bit, but still not very good. Still inconsistent. Just two wins this season. Uh, the team to really watch there is Fulham and Newcastle and Brighton. Those three teams are three teams to watch. Fulham have really picked it up since uh, January, well, really before January, back in December, they picked things up. They're drawing too many games, so that's their big problem, drawing too many games rather than winning, and they're not getting uh, enough points, they're not getting max points, they're not. They're, they're turning victories into draws, uh, and that has been really hampering them, but because Newcastle United and Brighton just can't pull away, those two teams very poor at the moment, uh, Brighton, they uh, will give them credit, they have picked it up over the last uh, month, playing well, uh, they've got a big game this weekend, uh, and then, like I say, Newcastle have, have just been poor injuries right now affecting them. Uh, star striker at Callum Wilson is out at the moment and won't be available for this weekend or for the next couple of weeks. Uh, so that could really give Fulham the chance to 
uh, leapfrog Newcastle United and uh, earn uh, survival uh, while Newcastle United uh, go back down to the championship for the first time in, in a few years. Uh, Steve Bruce, don't really rate him as a, as a manager, uh, and he's really had a poor two seasons at Newcastle United. Now, that's my overview of the Premier League going into match day 26. So now, let's take a look at the Soccer Buddy tool and have a look at the games as uh, I talk you through them. Okay, guys, we got five games coming up on Sunday, February 28th. That is match day 26. So there's going to be games kicking off uh, on Saturday, playing on Sunday as well. But we're going to look, fo we're going to focus our attention just on these Sunday games here using the Soccer Buddy tool. And as you can see, we've got our tool here. If you've ever used this, then you know exactly how it works. But of course, simply just go over to the SeaCodeSystem.com website and use the VIP tools. And you can find this under bonus tools. And uh, this gives you a lot of help with making your betting predictions and betting decisions. And all you have to do, if you don't know how it works, just click on that and you'll be taken to a little tutorial that will give you up-to-date information. Now I've got our hot trends on, turning it back on there. And we can see we have a hot trend for this game here between Manchester United and Chelsea, which will be played at Stamford Bridge in London. And we are at five to six predicting totals over 1.5 in games with Chelsea in the last six games. Now, we'll talk about that game in just a little bit, but just keep in mind, Chelsea do not score a lot of goals at the moment, so just keep that in mind, put a pin in that one. But let's look at that Burnley-Tottenham game first off, which is going to take place in London at the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium. Spurs going into this game, coming off of a Europa League win uh, over the uh, during midweek against Wolfsburger AC. No problem there going through. And uh, Spurs, though, very inconsistent under Jose Mourinho. One week, they'll be a great team, they'll be scoring goals, and then the next, they will be slipping up, losing games. And, uh, you know, it, it's a Jekyll and Hyde team right now. Burnley, near the bottom of the table right now. We just saw them uh, down near there, uh, in the bottom six. And this is a team that has struggled to get points this season. And a team that has really little quality in the side. Uh, so Sean Dyche, manager, you, you've got to always praise him for the work he's done because he does a lot of good things with that team. Because most of the time... If, if any other manager, this is a team that would be finishing last or near the bottom of the table each season, in and out. Uh, but Daesh, through his management uh, and his player, his personnel management, uh, has really helped this team uh, to stay consistent and to stay in the league over the last few seasons. Um, but saying that, I don't think Burnley have the, the quality to really stick with Tottenham in this game. Uh, Harry Kane, Sun, uh, Sun, Yung, Sun Kyung Min, and uh, all those other great players at Tottenham Hotspur right now, I think are going to just uh, roll over this Burnley tide. 2-1 scoreline looks pretty good because Tottenham, again, they're not playing great in the Premier League. They're ninth right now in the league, uh, nine points off of the top four. This game could help them pull a little bit closer to that with a win, uh, and I think they will get that win. Uh, I, I do think maybe their defense could keep a clean sheet in this game. Burnley do not score a lot of goals, so we might see a Tottenham Hotspur clean sheet win uh, in this game rather than a 2-1, but I do like Spurs to go ahead and pick up a victory in this game. All right, let's move on to that Liverpool versus Sheffield United game. That's a game that uh, I have my eyes on because, uh, of course, if you've watched uh, watched along here, uh, I am a Liverpool supporter. Um, unfortunately, Liverpool playing very poorly right now. League title, uh, title hopes over for a second straight league title. Uh, four straight losses for Liverpool. This is incredible uh, because they've only scored two goals during that time. Only one of those goals came from open play. The other was a penalty. Uh, Liverpool are five points back of West Ham right now who are in fourth place. And that's the objective right now for Liverpool is to just simply get fourth place and get um, uh, get Champions League qualification for next season. It's going to be very difficult because uh, Chelsea are right there, Everton are right there. So these teams are all uh, going to be fighting it out tooth and nail to get that uh, last Champions League place. Now Liverpool losing last weekend to Everton in the Premier League 2-0 at Anfield. It was the first time since 1999 that Liverpool had lost at home to City rivals Everton. So uh, it doesn't look good going into this game, but the good news is Liverpool are playing Sheffield United, who are, if you remember from the standings just a second ago, rock bottom of the Premier League, 11 points from 25 games this season, minus 26 goal difference. Now I must say Sheffield United did shock uh, Manchester United uh, just a few weeks ago with a shock 2-1 win at Old Trafford. Now, I don't expect that to happen again, but here's the problem. Liverpool have a lot, a lot, a lot of defensive injuries and injuries just in general. Um, their three main center backs, Joel Matip, Virgil van Dijk, Joe Gomez, are out for the season or at least out until the end 
uh, until May through injuries, ankles, and knees. Uh, Jordan Henderson, who is a midfielder who has been playing in central defense to cover for those injuries, he's just gone down last week with a hamstring injury out for probably six weeks. Fabinho, uh, another midfielder who has been playing as a central defender, he has been out recently with, I believe, an ankle injury and will not play this weekend, as far as I know. At the moment, those are the reports. Henderson won't play, those are the reports. So it looks like it's going to be 19-year-old Ozan Kabak, who was signed in January, partnering perhaps with Nat Phillips or Reese Williams or Ben Davies. These are all um, untested players at this level and players who are uh, filling in. These are not first or second choice players. These are players third, fourth choice who are filling in. So Sheffield United could exploit uh, those issues that Liverpool are having in central defense. But the problem is Sheffield United do not score a lot of goals. Like I said, minus 26 goal difference this season. Uh, This is a team who Chris Wilder, manager of Sheffield United, he, he has a strong defensive mindset with his team, uh, but this is not a good attacking team. Now, Liverpool's front three of Sadio Mane, Mohamed Salah, and Rupert Firmino are three of the best forwards in the world, but they have not been clicking at all since Christmas. And um, that, that could haunt them in this game. I do think Liverpool can pull this game out. I wouldn't be surprised Sheffield United getting on the scoreline. That 2-1 scoreline looks pretty good. Um, but uh, yeah, I think Sheffield, I think Sheffield United will give it, make it a, a difficult game. You can see there we got the first half score prediction there at Bramall Lane, a one nil lead for Sheffield United. I, I, the way Liverpool have played right now, I wouldn't be surprised to see that happen. Um, but I do think Liverpool will pick up a win. They've won four straight games against Sheffield United, and um, I think they can make it five uh, on on uh, Sunday. All right, let's look at that Leicester City Arsenal game. This is a huge game right here uh, between two teams with uh, aspirations in the top four. Now, Arsenal are well down the table. They are 11th, and inconsistencies have really hurt them. Losers of three of their last four in the league, while Leicester City are uh, playing pretty well and in third place. Now, last year, Leicester City, um, they peaked around Christmas time in the 2019-20 season and then fell off the pace and ended up losing out on making the top four. They had to settle for a Europa League place. Arsenal, uh, their only reason for playing in Europe this year was winning the FA Cup last year. Both teams played in midweek in the Europa League. Arsenal picking up a 3-2 win against Sporting, uh, excuse me, against Benfica from uh, Portugal, and they move on to the last 16 in the competition. That is their aim right now. They're, the idea of them making the top four is is really out of the question. Uh, they're 11 points back from the top four and not playing well enough in the league to reach that top four or even the top five. But the aim is for the Europa League. And there's been some some words and rumors swirling around that uh, manager Mikel Arteta could get sacked if Arsenal do not uh, do well in the Europa League. Uh, That's their last chance at silverware this season. Leicester City didn't have a great week. They lost in the Europa League to Slavia Prague. Uh, Slavia Prague, the underdogs, uh, actually saw this game this coming. Leicester City played very poorly in the first leg and um, from the start uh, in the second leg, while Slavia Prague really had the bit between their teeth and went for it and uh, picked up a 2-0 win, eliminating Leicester City from the Europa League. Now, Leicester City do have the chance to make uh, make Champions League football for only the second time. So that is, again, going to be their aim going forward as they uh, play the season. Uh, Leicester City have won their last two games at home against Arsenal at uh, King Power Stadium, and I don't see them losing this game. I think that they're going to pick up a win. Uh, just a little side note, one of those little things that can really affect the game. Leicester City did play on Thursday night in England at home, while Arsenal had to go to uh, to Greece to play Benfica in their Europa League game just because of some COVID-19 restrictions that prevented flights from Portugal to the UK. So they ended up having to make that big trek uh, over to Greece. So I think that you know, was one of those little nuggets that gives the home team, Leicester City, an edge. And I think Leicester City are going to pull out a win in this game. Now, moving on to this game here, Fulham versus Crystal Palace. And I'm going to cover all these games. You know, this is a little tidbit I give you here on these videos compared to the blog. In the blog, I'll just cover a couple of games. And this is the true um, greatness of watching Z Code system here on YouTube is you get some extra picks and from time to time. So uh, that's what we're doing today. So I'm going to give you all of these games, and you've got them there on your TV or on your computer screen, not your TV screen, but your computer screen. So I'm going to give you all these picks, talk through them um, as we go here. Now, Fulham are going to visit Crystal Palace. This is a London derby, and um, Fulham, they are nearing 
uh, escape from the relegation zone. Uh, they'll be hoping Newcastle United drop points this weekend so they can leapfrog them in the table. Crystal Palace, again, one of those inconsistent teams in the Premier League. Uh, you don't know what you're going to get from time to time, from week to week. And manager Roy Hodgson has um, injury issues, always has injury issues, it seems like. Uh, so he will be you know, getting together the players he can um, and trying to take points off of Fulham and hurting their chances of staying in the Premier League. I actually like Fulham for this game. I like uh, I like them to, to get something out of this. Maybe not a win, but at least a point um, to stay in that fight. They've really improved defensively since uh, December. Uh, Crystal Palace are always a, a rather good defensive team. They're pretty poor in attack. Um, Wilfred Zaha, I'm not sure if he will be back at the moment uh, for Crystal Palace. He's been injured uh, of late, and he's their talisman, their, their main attacking player. So if he is unable to go, then uh, I really fancy Fulham to get points in this game. Like I said, Fulham uh, are just uh, three points back of Newcastle United. If they win and Newcastle United lose, they would leave. They would move out of the relegation zone based on goal difference. Um, looking at Crystal Palace, Crystal Palace on 32 points right now. And um, I fancy, like I say, I fancy Fulham to get something out of this game. Uh, Crystal Palace are coming off of a win, 2-1 over Brighton. But just before that, lost two games in a row. So this is a team, like I say, Crystal Palace, they, they put together a win or two. And then you're going to see them lose two or three games. So um, very inconsistent. Uh, manager Roy Hodgson uh, and a lot of these players seem to be out of contract at the end of the season. So a lot of them playing for their lives right now at the club uh, or just to get picked up by another club. Uh, Hodgson, I believe, is something like 75, 76, 77 years old. Uh, he may be you know, kind of forced into retirement um, uh, at the end of the season. You know, I was having a conversation the other day with my wife about uh, Hodgson and his age and just thinking about my parents being of similar age and just how, you know, they're retired and, you know, I don't necessarily trust them with a lot of big decisions. And, you know, it's funny that managers uh, in sports, all sports, baseball, basketball, uh, NFL, football, uh, and, and of course, in Premier League and, and soccer around the world, you know, these older managers are tasked with coaching these young players. Uh, and it's just funny because, you know, I wouldn't you know necessarily leave my, my son, my seven-year-old with my parents who are in their 70s. So, yeah. Uh, anyhow, uh, moving on to this last game of Sunday. This is uh, the last game to cover. Uh, it will be played slightly before the Liverpool game on Sunday uh, evening. Uh, Manchester United visiting Chelsea and Chelsea going into this game unbeaten in six straight games after the hiring of Thomas Tuchel. Uh, they fired club legend Frank Lampard, pl club playing legend uh, Frank Lampard, his managerial time there, very inconsistent, uh, favoring, you know, showing very much favoring certain players over others. And a lot of that favoring, it really damaged uh, the team's performances. We've seen Tuchel since he's come back six games ago. He's recalled a couple of the players that Lampard um, sidelined, that he that he froze out, Marcus Alonso, uh, Olivier Giroud didn't get necessarily a lot of time under Frank Lampard. Those players have been massive uh, over the last six games, making huge impacts in the league. And we just saw in midweek, Chelsea picking up a huge 1-0 win away to Atletico Madrid in the Champions League last 16 first leg. And who scored it? Olivier Giroud did. Who had a good game? Marcus Alonso. So we're seeing some of these players be brought back in that Lampard froze out and uh, kept out of the squad. And we're seeing them really make huge contributions to a team that they made contributions to uh, prior to Lampard's uh, arrival. Um, I like Chelsea for this game. I really like what they're doing. I, I like Tuchel. I like what he's done with the team. He's really changed them. They've only given up two league goals in their last six games. I believe overall they've played eight games under Tuchel in all competitions, only given up two goals. Uh, now, they're not scoring a lot of goals. That's one of the problems that they're having, but they're getting wins. That's more important, really. Um, so they're, they're doing well. And as I've said, Manchester United, in my opinion, are very inconsistent. They're not as good of a team as uh, what a lot of people uh, really think they are, um, and I think that we're going to see them slip up more. And I think, I think, in my opinion, we're going to see Manchester United um, maybe struggle to hold on to that um, that fourth place or, or stay in fourth, uh, stay in the top four, I should say. Um, they've got some tough games coming up. They've got uh, they've got Chelsea this weekend. They've got Manchester City coming up. They've got West Ham coming up. Leicester City uh, again against Tottenham Hotspur, who beat them six one earlier this season at Old Trafford. Uh, they've got uh, a game against Liverpool as well, so uh, and uh, a second game against Leicester City. So they're going to be playing Leicester City uh, twice coming up. Actually, one's in the FA Cup, uh, so one in the league, one in the FA Cup. So this is a this is a team that's going to be very much tested 
and I think that they're going to fail some of these tests coming up over the next couple of weeks. All right, guys. So those are my picks, and uh, those are my picks for this weekend in the Premier League uh, here at Z Code System. You can go over to the VIP, check out all the tools for this weekend, use the VIP wall, and use the Soccer Buddy app, and uh, get up to date on everything that we post there, and get in on the knowledge. Uh, also, guys, if you would please like and subscribe to the Z Code System channel, so you get these picks every time that we post them. We post videos regularly every week. Uh, two, three, four videos a week uh, so you can get up to date on everything and get those notifications sent to you. And of course, you can always follow me on social media. I'm on Twitter at Drew M. Farmer so you can get on the conversation of football there with me. And I post a lot of other things, not necessarily uh, anything to do with uh, betting, just uh, in general things, what's going on and uh, you know different sports things. So uh, let me know uh, what you think uh, of, of these picks also in the comments below, guys, and who you are backing to win this weekend. All right, I'm going to get out of here now so you can go lay down your bets, and we will see you next time here on Z Code System.